My name's Joe Hinkle. Um, I'm posting this video. It's only going to be posted for comments on the Holiday Coro Facebook Technical Support Forum. Um, I'm working on a new capability that'll be on the Hinks Pro Controllers uh, webpage, and that is to help you design and configure quickly your controller. Uh, today, I would suspect the standard philosophy is you go into LOR, you go into X lights, and you identify uh, all of your your props and uh, associate them with universes and channel accounts. And then you come over and you get into my E131 and you put the data in. And then you go into output settings and you put the data in. And that's pretty much how things have been for the last 10 or 15 years. <clears throat> uh, that can be difficult for somebody brand new getting into this. If you've been doing it a while, it kind of makes sense. And then you go right in and do it. What's changing the ball game is my smart technology, my smart receivers that are on long range. Um, that is causing some people's eyes to roll in the back of their head. And until the light bulb goes off, it's kind of hard to understand. Well, I'm trying to address that. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate here. And what I'm looking for is your feedback. Uh, am I on the right path? I'm probably several days from releasing this, but I'm still in the design phase and I kind of want to get some feedback. The idea here is you don't start with your sequencing software. So you don't start with LOR, you don't start with X lights, you start with what you know, meaning everyone that's going to put up a show, they know how many physical strings they have and how many pixels are attached to each of those strings. They also know what hardware they have. They know they got a Hinx Pix. Do they have one or two long range uh, transmitter boards, one or two spy boards within the same box that's got the Hinx Pix Pro? If they've got long range receivers, are they smart receivers? Are they a four port, 16 port AC? You physically know what hardware you have and associated with each of those hardware there are green euro connectors or pigtails that you attach your strings to. So everything that I'm going to be talking about and having you do is associated with things you can touch, you know and understand. And the design flow process is you tell me about your strings, you tell me where those strings are attached to what boards and how those boards are attached within the Hinks Pro system. Then there'll be a little button. This perform design check and update controller and I will automatically then go out and properly configure your E131 and your output page to meet this design intent. Which means you don't have to do any of that. And the nice thing about it is when you get all done, this string table, you can directly use that to uh, outline your design in either X lights or LOR. So let me kind of walk through a typical design that I see somebody doing and give me your feedback. Uh, am I missing something? Does it look okay? Uh, possible suggestions? So here we go. So we start off. The Hinx Pix Pro has got three driver boards, okay? Right now, it doesn't have any. So let's say uh, you're getting one long range board and you're getting one spy. Well, this is the, this, these are all the possible configurations that can go in a Hinx Pix Pro flex uh, box. Uh, you can either get zero, one, or two spies. You can get one, two, or three long range. You got three boards and you take your pick. For this example, I'm only going to use one long range board and one 16 port spy. And if they're getting shipped out of Holiday Coral, more than likely they're going to come where the first ribbon cable furthest to the back 
is ports 1 through 16. That's going to be attached to the long range. And the middle one, which is going to be attached to the spy. So in this case, you tell me what boards you have and then how, where their position is via the ribbon cable. Okay? Now that we have a long range, we picked long range board one, there are four Cat5 cable connections that drive data out of them. Well, if the worst case scenario was your, your configuration was all three long range, then you've got 12 possible Cat5 cables that you can configure. So when you pick these, you can pick one of the 12. So we're only going to pick one right now. Let's just say we're going to use a definition. This is this Cat1 through Cat12 are just names so you can identify them. So we're going to pick Cat1 and we're going to say whatever we do on Cat1 is going to be connected to this very first cable that's connected to long range board one. Long range board one is attached to the uh, ports one to 16 of the Hinks picks. Now, as we scroll down from that, we see that we have a long range and now we have our spy. On our long range, we can assign a four port dumb, a four port spy, a 16 port spy, and a smart 16. And with each of these, all you got to do is tell me about the string that you're going to attach. So let's talk about strings. We come up here and we'll just add some more strings. So you can come in here and say, well, I'm going to have a snowflake. And it's going to be one string. And let's just say it's going to be universe uh, 10. And we're going to have uh, 100 channels on it. Uh, excuse me, 300 channels. We're going to have 100 pixels. And you might have another one here, a mini tree. And that is going to be, we'll say that's universe 3. And that's 150 because it's got 50 pixels on it. Let's say we got a really big one. Let's say we got a matrix. And we'll just call it row 1. And here we're going to have universe 100. And we're just going to say we've got... Uh, uh, 510, and we're going to have universe 101, and we're going to have 510, and we're going to have universe 102, and we're going to have 510. Now, I'm pretty sure that everything I'm talking about here is easy to grasp because you already know what strings you have and how many pixels are attached. So you got to do a little math. You got to multiply your pixels times three to get channels. And you're going to want to assign a universe. And if you notice, if you haven't heard my spiel on what a universe is, it's any number between one and let's just say 65,000. They don't have to be in sequence. It's nothing more than a packet address. Okay. They can be used by you to help uh, in your design. Uh, what I'll do is I'll check for all of these things. Um, anyways, so now, now we have our universes, excuse me, we've identified our channels. We can do a sanity check. If I do a sanity check, valid is data, and it comes up and it automatically gives me my channel account. Now we come down here, and let's just say in this smart four, we're going to have this mini tree. Well, all I got to do down here is click on that and click on the mini tree and it brings the name down. And we'll just say that uh, this one here is going to be attached to the snowflake. And there's the snowflake. So, and here's the spy board. You'd be doing similar things on the spy board. This is an internal spy board. So the only thing you're going to do here is identify what strings you're going to be attached. So I'm pretty sure that this should be easily grasped by even 
somebody just purchasing it and coming out straight. The only thing that might be a little challenge is universe, but um, a little bit of reading or a little bit of watching should fairly quickly bring you up to speed on that. With all of that then, it'll just be perform a design check, update the controller, and your board's configured. And the nice thing is, as I said before, once you have this string set up, this is what you effectively put in the layout of X lights. I'm not sure about LOR, but you probably do something similar in LOR. So now you can just take that over, put that in unmanaged. Don't try to do managed LOR where they configure it. I've not found them to be able to. I just had a gentleman call me today that tried to do an X lights configure, not even using smart technology, and it wasn't working. So my suggestion is to go what they call unmanaged, where you identify each universe individually, and then you associate your props with a specific universe. And um, that way, if things go wrong, it's very easy to figure out what it is. So I'm going to conclude this. I wanted to give you a quick view of what I'm doing. I should have this released here within the next week to two weeks, but I'm trying to get an idea now, an early comment on whether you think this is going to fit your needs, whether it's going to help, any comments, any suggestions. Thank you and have a great day and be safe. Bye.